Welcome, everybody, back to Bears Edition Podcast Breakdowns. Myself, Kevin Lampka, alongside you know him, Kellen Gerenstein, the king of the breakdowns himself. And we're breaking down somebody that we've spoken about in the past, and we didn't think we'd break him down. That would be third-year tight end Cole Komet. Coming into a new offensive system with Luke Getze, there are high hopes for what he can turn into. We're going to break it down today, Kellen, see if he can be that tight end everyone thought he could be when he was drafted three years ago. Kellen, this is, uh, you know, you've had your criticism of Komet in the past, but even looking through the clips beforehand, you you seem to think that there could be something there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was telling you before we started recording, I, I think that I was pretty thoroughly impressed, actually, with what I saw. I think there was a little bit more physicality as far as watching him as a blocker. And even as far as a receiver, I think there was a little bit more fluidity than what we saw in 2020. Now, my criticism of Cole Komet has always been, I don't think he should have been the 43rd pick of the 2020 draft. I thought he should have been taken either very late on day two or sometime on day three. That was my criticism. Now he's obviously not a world beating football player, you know, so there's a, there's a really, there's a top tier of tight ends in the league with, I I think Kittle and Kelsey in the league of their own. And I think Kyle Pitts is going to join that tier probably this season. You got the Mark Andrews, TJ Hawkinson's and a healthy Robert Tunyon, you know, that round out that next kind of tier. And I think Cole Komet is still a step below all of them but he still can be a productive guy for your football team and a team that's probably going to use tight ends, 11 personnel, 12 personnel a lot. Cause that's just how this system that, how that's this West coast system works. Yeah. It's how Luke Getsy is probably going to want to run it, especially with the lack of proven ability. As far as bears receivers go, you've just got Darnell Mooney and then you've got two new guys, Byron Pringle and Bayless Jones who are stepping into your room. Obviously Pringle, we did the break. We did the breakdown on both of them. Um, but I, you know, they're probably going to rely on these guys that have been, in the in the room, Justin Fields has, has had a year with both of with both Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. So you're probably going to see a little bit more of a reliance on those two guys, Komet especially because he's going to be that big target over the middle. So I think where they'll use him mostly, he's not going to be the Jimmy Graham where we're throwing him red zone one on one jump balls. He's going to win these matchups by get stacking. You know, whoever is on top of him, whether it's mostly likely going to be a linebacker or a safety. Or what happens a lot on film is the Bears will go trips away and Komet will be the lone man on the right. So sometimes you'll get a corner manned on him. And anytime he does that, he's going to run an in-breaking route because that leverage is always going to be outside because he's got the whole – he's he's lined up, I'd say, pretty much on the hash. So that corner is going to have to protect. And you see it a lot. There's plays on on tape where he's beating Von Bell and Eric Stokes, like guys who are seasoned – you know, Eric Stokes was a rookie last year. But guys who are seasoned athletes, you know, guys who really can cover – you know, almost any position on the field and he's beating them, you know, with these inside moves and, and it's nothing special, right? Like I said, it's nothing world mm-hmm. beating. He's a very balanced tight end. And, and I, I think, if, you know, when we get in these clips, you'll see it. Um, and, and I think there was, a, I think that's a better football player watching tape than I originally gave him credit for. Definitely. Well, let's look at the tape, man. Let's pull it up. Yeah. So this is one of the blocking clips that I got. I, I think I've got five clips. And I think two of them are blocking clips and uh, both of them are actually from this 49ers game. Um, But here we're just going to see the Bears run a staple of their offense, which is just anywhere from mid zone to outside zone. And I didn't even point Cole Clement out before the play started, but he's 85 right here on this edge. And for outside zone, any zone play, the line is always running with the strength of the call. Now, this to me looks like outside zone because of the way that the offensive line is trying to track. You see how Jason Peters is trying to get his hips around. So that makes me think that it's outside zone. And a lot of guys are trying to move more square to the line of scrimmage. So that's what makes me think of that. And Khalil Herbert does a great job of cutting up. But what I want people to see here is Cole come in on this block. Now, I would love him to drop his hips a little bit more and try and at least get him around. I know what he's trying to do. I know he's really trying to push this guy out. And that he does a great job of that. He really kind of he, – he's the reason why Khalil Herbert gets another – 15 20 yards on this play now that the offensive line all the way from peters to borm does it they do a mm-hmm. great job here and you're going to see cole commit lined up to the strength a lot here on these runs because you're not going to run to demir bird who's trying to block nick Bosa, one of the best football players in all of the nfl so you're going to see him on the strength a lot he does a good job here of tagging out now if this I, this it might be eric Armstead. i don't know who this is on the other side um but this could be you know, Cole Komet could be anticipating him coming so- coming outside, and that could be his guy that he has to block, right? He's going to block the most outside defender that that's threatening him. But this defender goes inside, so he does a good job of tagging off and mm-hmm. passing that to Jason Peters and immediately gets to the second level, gets his hands on him. Cole Komet's got really good last strike. 
I could I think I could critique this blocking here by him not being as low as I would like him to be and probably trying to gain a little bit too much ground with his feet. I think sometimes that can get you in trouble, but because he's a little bit more physically imposing than the guy he's trying to block, he kind of gets away with it with his last strength. But just the kind of things that we're going to – the Bears are going to be a zone-running team. They're going to rely Correct. heavily on, on outside zone and mid zone a lot because they've got two really good downhill runners in Khalil Herbert and David Montgomery, guys. That, that's where they're going to make their living at. And they just don't have super, super imposing offensive linemen. We don't have James Daniels anymore. Lucas Patrick has played – in this scheme that Luke Getze is going to run for us. Um, so that's what that's what we're going to see. Tevin Jenkins is a guy that can really move and get his hands on. He's got insane latch strength, insane hand strength. Larry Bourne did a great job in this 49ers game for his first start against yeah. an NFL superstar like Nick Bosa. So I think, I think people, and I think it's a fair criticism, we Bears fans are very optimistic, and we do probably overrate our football team a bit. We can and week out, but that's just part of the gig. Um, but I do think that this this team can overperform a little bit. I think Luke Getz is going to make it easy on a lot of these guys. I think Matt Nagy put Cole Komet in a lot of situations where he was in a very low chance of winning his rep. But this is the kind of stuff you're going to see. This is the stuff that I believe that's going to translate from Matt Nagy to Luke Getz as far as offensive schemes go. Um, and I just think it's a great rep here because, like I said, you know, Khalil Herbert right here, this he's already getting great yards. This is this is a great job by the offensive line. He's probably going to have to make one more guy miss. But because mm -hmm. Cole Komet is still blocking this guy to the sideline, Khalil Herbert's got that burst to get that extra set of yards and put him inside the in the red zone. I think it's a great play by him. Yeah, it's a good job, man. And this is something about his game that you know people have talked about in the past. Like he's been an okay blocker. I wouldn't say he's been an elite tight end blocker, but mm -hmm. he's been good enough. I mean, this is a guy who weighs two hundred sixty pounds. He's six six two sixty. This is a big guy that you're expecting to block. Um, and, and as you mentioned, this new system coming in, he's going to be expected to do that. But he's going to have to increase you know, his role in the passing game. And that's where when you start to think of, okay, is Cole Komet going to be a household name for not just Bears fans, but for other fans around the league, he's going to have to do more um, from the receiving end. So, so let's, you know, let's just get straight into it. Let's bring up a receiving clip uh, as well here and show Absolutely. off, you know, what, what we could potentially see, but that blocking aspect is something that can't be denied. You know, it's, I think as, you know, even as fans, even as, you know, analysts of the game, you, you forget about that sometimes when you think about how do we, correctly evaluate a guy like Cole Komet in his career so far you have to take the blocking into uh in, into uh as a factor as well but let's take a look here here's a, a reception here or a passing yeah, rep. he's on the right yeah. side right this isn't this isn't yep this is him right here I don't he's not catching this ball but this is me I guess still trying to be upset at Matt Nagy for what he did I think this ball is a completion and a first down and I probably should have pulled up the wide clip too instead of just the end zone but this is a ball that I think Justin Fields has to throw. And I think this just comes with reps and timing. This is still infant Justin Fields. I think this might have been his fourth or fifth start somewhere around there. Early. I couldn't remember exactly which one it was. But I think he's got to get his head around a little bit faster and be more deliberate because Cole Komet does a great job on this play of avoiding traffic. And he knows this is exactly what I said earlier all the guys to the formation are all over here to the left. So this guy is manned up on Cole Komet. He has to know that either this guy here is, or one of them is here, or they're both bracketing him. So he realizes that right off the bat that this linebacker's eyes are not on him. So I think he assumes that, that the guy covering me is the guy on the outside of me. Does a really good job of being subtle. Of, see this, sh this shoulder shimmy here, trying to get underneath and causing that collision. Now he's got a step of separation on number four here, right? So – we're moving and we're open. I think right now Justin Fields has got to get rid of the ball. And I know it's tough because, right, Fred Warner is here. So I think when he sees that, he immediately gets off of it, right? Mm -hmm. He immediately gets off of that throw, and that's fine. But Fred Warner now is coming back to this. The, Jesse the James, leak. I think. I think they call this – yeah, he's calling this – I think they call this the leak in, in, the, in the outside zone in the, in the PA system. So I think, I think with more reps and with more time in the offense, if Justin Fields – if he did get these reps with Cole Komet, he had, you know, if that's just for Horsted, right. Maybe it's different because he had that connection. <laughs> yeah, the rapport, him, right. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, that's, and that's for real. And probably Jesse James too. We saw the, the, the Jesse James throw. I thought it was, it might've been Justin Fields best throw the touchdown that he threw Jesse James in this game mm -hmm. when he, 
practically threw a, a shortstop sidearm falling away. It was ridiculous. So, but this is one of those plays where I looked at it and I said, that, that's, some, that's a pretty good job of creating separation. And, that, and like I said, I should have picked uh, the wide clip too because there was a corner over here, which is why Komet stops here. But if not, he's going to keep running. But I think, again, this just shows, I think, with another step with Justin Fields, there's going to be a bit more production. You add one target there to Cole Komet, you add one reception, and you add probably, I mean, with this ball is snapped at, what's this, the, if this is the 50, then this is what, the 37, right? So Cole Komet's catching this. At the 47, he's catching it. At the 10, he's probably getting probably 5, 10, maybe more yards of, of run after the catch there. Mm -hmm. So I think we're talking about a bit more production with a whole – with Luke Getze being around Justin Fields and being able to focus on Justin Fields being his starter. Right? I think that we're talking about a Cole Komet that's – he's probably getting another catch or two a game, you know, which is which is a lot. I mean, that's another th – if, if, if we're talking the max, that's another – 30 catches in a year he had 60 last season and I think he's going to have a bigger role because there is no more Allen Robinson and I don't think Luke Getze is going to rely too much on 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 newcomers I think he is going to try and target these new guys and I think Justin Fields is too yeah. um so again not a not a commit reception but I do think that it's a it just shows a little bit of growth from him because I that was one of the, the things on him coming out of college I didn't think that he was going to be able to separate against really anybody and I know Fred Warner is might be the freakiest athlete in all of football but I think this is a great job of commit just finding a way to get open and understanding too that he probably is going to have to slow down because he's running into the corner so a little bit of everything and obviously Justin this is better than him you know running out of or throwing the ball out of bounds or taking a sack or trying to force anything you know if he doesn't feel comfortable run with it but I do think that in the year two with fields and commit, I think that's a gain of about 25 yards. Yeah. And you actually look at he looks pretty fast on this play. I mean, again, Cole Komet is a four seven guy. So when he, you know, when he alludes to those comparisons to Robert Tunyon and George Kittle, the one thing that's kind of lacking is he, he's about, you know, he's a few ticks slower than those guys. So he's not going to be exact an exact replicate of the guys he wants to be, specifically George Kittle, who's just an insane athlete. But Cole Komet is a good athlete for his size. Again, this guy is 6'6", 260. So, you know, running at this speed um, at his weight, you know, he looks quick enough there. Like, I'm not watching this. Like, he's not fast enough to separate from guys like that. Like, I don't see that, yeah. which is a good thing. And, you know, sometimes people will see the numbers and, you know, you know, people want to act like 40 numbers don't lie, but they do a lot. And I think you know, he is faster than what that four, seven, two is, at least from what I saw on that plan, what I've seen throughout the years. And, and one more thing too, about, uh, you know, just his opportunities, you know, he was actually sixth among, amongst all tight ends last year in deep targets with nine uh, and his average target distance, his average of the target was 10th amongst all tight ends at 7.9. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like people are kind of underestimating that aspect of his game is this guy, he has the ability and he, he has been put in situations where he can be a threat down the field. Like, I think a lot of people, when they think about, you know, what has Cole Komet done, you're thinking, you know, curl routes and short, you know, shit. And, you know, you know, not a lot of stuff down the field. He's not a vertical threat like a George Kittle can be, like a Travis Cussie can be, like a Robert Tunyon has been in the past. And that's, I think that's an element that exists and will be utilized this year. And, you know, people like to see big plays. What do you remember? You remember big plays. So you just need a couple big plays and you'll, you'll make mm -hmm. change your mind on what he's capable of. But let's take a, uh, a look at another play here. I'm going to go to the Packers game. Okay. Um, the first one. And the rest of these clips, I thought I had one more blocking clip, and I, I don't, but I could I could easily show it. And but it's not super important. But the next three clips I'm going to show, I'll show that how Cole Komet, I think, in my opinion, is going to be used, and that's going to be in a few different ways as far as where he's catching the ball. But where I'm thinking is, I think I already said this, intermediate over the middle of the field. And if you are going to go deep with them, I think it's going to be outside the numbers on those seven routes that the like seven stops, which is just a corner and stop, or he is running a corner. I think I might have a clip from Pittsburgh in here, which is crazy. I can't remember what clips I had, but um, Komet is here. Um, this is a condensed set. And I think they send Demir Bird in motion out of this tight bunch. And this is going to be a big thing is play action here, play action oh. over the middle against middle field open, right? Middle field open just means two safety. So you have this middle of the field to, to throw at, right? That play action to commit is going to be huge just to anyone, you know, but the, the, it, it is going to be the tight end. You know, I think play action 
play action we all know is a big part of of this scheme of this system but that's going to be a big thing and and this is actually a rarity on tape for him in my opinion is to get tackled by the first guy that touches him even though Mm -hmm. he is turning around and and getting hit right by him one of the things Cole Komet does really well and he did this his rookie year really well too outside of the couple fumbles he had was not letting the first guy to make contact with him bring him down you know you're always going to need that second or third helper or if you're trying to tackle him alone, he's probably going to break your tackle and get another couple of yards after contact. I think it's one of the more basic parts of his game that he has brought with him since day one. Is because you just talked about his size. What was he? Six six two fifty. That's a big dude. You can't. That's very hard to bring that man to bring that man down. Um, so I think that the you know with the way the NFL plays, they play a lot of cover four, a lot of two high shell. Right. This is a lot of what Justin Fields is going to see going forward because that's just the staple of how the game is played uh, as far as today goes. And, and it, that's, it's more so just the NFL than it is in college. I don't think Justin Fields saw a lot of it in college, a lot of, you know, being under center, making this play action fake and throwing over the middle. There were some times when he was under center and he was making those play action fakes, but I don't think he was seeing the same type of looks that he's seeing now, especially with the amount of post snap movement and the amount of, you know, blitzes that can be shown before the snap. There's a lot that he saw his rookie year that he probably wasn't ready for. But yeah. I think this is a lot more of what we're going to see. Does a good job. See these linebackers hold because of the play action. Just enough in time for commit to get open. It's not a perfect ball either, but that's kind of where yeah. you got to put it. You know, we probably probably want to play it right in his chest here. You know, that, 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 that's not a perfect ball. Um, but I can understand why he kind of put it a little behind him. Because if, if he keeps running into the safety, then it might be a kill shot. But first down, right? We're not going to complain about that. Yeah, you'll take that. And I think you're really right when you talk about the play action movements here. And I go back to that quote that he's talked about um, when he was speaking on Getsy's offense. And he says, you know, those play action movements and all those types of things, they're really advantageous. So, again, like these are glimpses of what we should have been seeing more of last year. We should have been seeing more of this. And that's why, you know, when you think about, you know, not only – do we think he can be a bigger piece in this offense just, you know, from a production standpoint? I really do think his yardage is going to go up, you know, just because he's going to get more opportunities in positions like this where he's going to be open. I mean, there's a lot of times, like, and you think, you know, you can argue about whether he's the greatest separator and he's not as a tight end. But, again, he, as was every other offensive player in the Mad Nagy offense, was victim to being put in a situation where he wasn't uh, able to get open. You know, just the, the schemes that, and the routes that they were running – uh, a lot of times when the ball is being thrown to Cole Komet, like, yeah, he had three drops on the year, but also there's a defender right there able to knock it away. Um, so, you know, uh, that's why in this Luke Etsy offense, you got to have some confidence, you know, regardless of how good you think Luke Etsy is, he'll be better than Matt Nagy as far as getting these guys open and getting them the ball in space. And, you know, I really like that you mentioned one of his major strengths that people kind of forgot about last year because we saw it so much the rookie season and not as much this past year was, you know, breaking tackles and, like I can go back to a number of plays that rookie season when I'm like, damn, like they cannot bring this guy down. And I think there was one game yeah. against Green Bay, one of those years yeah. where he got super fired up because he was just pushing yep. guys to the ground. And everyone's like, oh, here we go. Chicago kick Polka Med against his yeah. rival. Like it all just. That's my it, favorite thing about him is he yeah. hates the Packers. And you can tell he hates the Packers. I love it. Which everyone thinks is an underlying reason why, you know, they drafted him uh, and people mm-hmm. have their opinions on that. But nonetheless, mm-hmm. yeah, he, he can do that after the catch. But let's go to our, our fourth clip here. We're starting to see a little bit more now of, of what he's capable of um, and giving you guys a little bit of a reminder that, you know, he's not a bust. I know people want to throw that word out to him. Uh, and, you know, again, tight ends in general, more than any other position, they take a little bit longer to develop. They take a little bit longer uh, for the most part to become, you know, a household name among, you know, the league. But here yep. we are against the Minnesota Vikings on Monday Night Football. I remember a couple yep. of plays from this game. So let's see what yep. we got. Yeah, this is this is just four verts here. And, and again, I think this is a look that Justin Fields hadn't really seen a lot in college because no one was going to try. He, he got this against Indiana. I remember very specifically the very like the very first throw he had in the, the 2020 Indiana game. And mm-hmm. Garrett Wilson had like a 50, 60 yard catch and they never tried to do it again. They went one high for the rest of the game. But it's kind of hard to see because NFL Game Pass sucks. I ran it by NFL Game Pass another time. But this is where, you know, Jimmy Graham, we saw a lot, in my opinion, get those one-on-one catches outside the numbers when he was matched up one-on-one with a corner. And Cole Komet just doesn't have that. And even with a washed, quote-unquote, washed Jimmy Graham, you know, he was still able to make some of those plays. 
Yeah. I think that, like I said, intermediate, if Cole Komet's going to be catching this ball deep, if he's going to catch it past 15, 20 yards, it's going to be exactly this area of the field. It's going to be between the hashes. It's going to be between the tackle box. You know, if this tackle box extended all the way down the field, that's where Cole Komet is going to make a lot of his money if he's going to have a lot of yards this season. This is a great catch. This is against Eric Kendricks, who's one of the more athletic middle linebackers in football. You know, and this is a good throw by Justin Fields. It's one of the better ones he had in this game. Um, and this is just a simple four verts concept, right? And, and this is just, I think Eric Kendricks is just taking number three if he crosses the middle of the field, which he does. This is the rest of it is just cover four down here and they're playing cover two over here. So a little bit of a combo as far as where they're splitting it up from. They kind of got a bunch of different rules. Defensive coordinators are masterminds. I have no idea what they say in their meetings. But all I know is that Cole Komet has this one-on-one against Eric Kendricks. It's a good ball and he great wins. Ball. That's a great ball and he wins, man. That's all that matters is you be better than the other guy on that play. And there's not a lot as far as for me to break down with Cole Komet, like how I was breaking down Bayless Jones. Like, look mm-hmm. at this guy sink his hips. Look at how he runs routes because that's not how Cole Komet is used. That's not the type of player he is, obviously, because they play two different positions. Bayless Jones is a 4-3 wide receiver. Cole Komet is, you know, the, the tight end that he is. So I'm not trying to compare the two. I'm just trying to to say that this is how – he's going to be used versus the other guys, right? This is how Cole Komet is going to make his money. Like I said, get that production, get a second contract with the Bears. That's This is where it's going to happen at. Now, I think Robert Tunyon did a really good job of being a vertical threat in Green Bay. Correct. I don't know if Luke Getzey sees that in Cole Komet. That's not up for me to decide. I, I don't even know if I feel comfortable projecting on that right now because I don't know what he's seeing in practice because all we've seen from Komet is this type of stuff, right? There's been no sort of ball that Cole Komet has caught in his life, or at least on the Bears, that was anything less or more than a level two ball, right? Everything is we're either firing it to you in the flats, or there's yeah. a couple throws in Pittsburgh where it's kind of similar to this. He's getting the ball over the middle, or Justin Fields is rolling out, throwing him that corner route, flipping his hips, right? So I don't know if we're going to have those big downfield shots. I would love to see it probably preseason if we're going to try it, uh, if he feels comfortable with it. Um, but I, like I said, I think a lot of this is a bit more impressive than what I thought it would be. This is kind of the guy I think the Bears think they're going to be drafting. He's going to have to do this consistently. Now, this is not a ball that you're going to catch every time you you know you throw it. This is a 50-50 ball. You're just trusting your guy because his back is turned, Eric Kendrick's back is turned, so Justin Fields gets in the ball. That's just how it works, right? That's what I kind of want to see more of, and that's what I think Lou Getzky is going to do a better job of creating is these favorable matchups and favorable throws. Mm. Justin Fields has a hell of an arm, and I think where he's really, really comfortable throwing, because obviously I think the deep ball is very, very good for him, and he's very good at throwing these accurate, like very deep out routes, like those 10 to 15 yard outs he yes. saw all the time with Darnell Mooney this year. I think he, this is exactly where he's going to excel, is he's one-on-ones over the middle. He did a great job with it with Jeremy Rucker, Garrett Wilson in college, because those were the two guys that really caught the ball over the middle. Chris Olave was that deep threat. And even in 2019, we were throwing a like Austin Mack and Benjamin Victor on those outbreakers. So I think Lou Getz is going to try and replicate as much of, of comfortable Justin Fields as we, as we see on these clips. And I'm trying to show you beside the one where he didn't throw the ball um, against yeah. the Niners. But like I said, I think that just comes with reps. I don't think he was, I don't think he was uh, experienced enough or, or had the, the repetitions in practice enough to feel comfortable with that in the game. So, This is actually one of Cole Komet's better games on the year. His second best game. He had six receptions, 71 yards, 13 fantasy points for those uh, who are the fantasy owners, who I know there are many and are wondering, well, should I draft Cole Komet? Well, maybe. But one of the things I like about you bringing up this play is, you know, we don't have a lot of tape from his opportunities in the red zone because he wasn't getting them. Um, I think his red zone – targets on goal to go were 33rd amongst all tight ends Mm -hmm. uh like lower than jimmy graham obviously because they threw to jimmy graham a lot but you kind of see a glimpse here of sort of what would what you would see in the red zone just meaning he's going to have to match up one-on-one and you know you know i said in the last clip i said well luke gets he's going to do a great job and you said luke gets he's going to do a great job of getting him with the right matchups getting him into open space and that's great but once you get into the red zone this is hey me versus you who's the better player like you're not opening up any you're not getting this guy in open space it's going to be if we truly do think you can be a legit 
legitimate tight end for us, you're going to have to go one-on-one in, in the corner of the end zone against a guy that, you know, you have to outmatch. And this is, you know, a situation where, you know, he just goes up and gets the ball over a player like Endrick, Eric Kendrick, who was a good job, but you're going to have to see these things more specifically in the red zone, because I feel like Jimmy Graham was still capable of, of, you know, doing things in the red zone last year. And that's why they used him. And I, you know, I had no problem with it at times because he was able to make plays and he dropped a lot of balls last year, but I was okay with them utilizing Jimmy Graham, but you got to have confidence coming in this year. Cause there is no second guy. Like mm-hmm. they, they really don't have a second guy that they're going to be able to use as much as Jimmy Graham. They have and Ryan they Griffin, James Ashan- but oh, Ryan Griffin, and Ryan James Griffin, Ashanti, right? Yeah. So, I mean, are guy, those yeah. guys going to be utilized? Maybe, but you got to call on your guy, Cole Komet here in the red zone and say, Hey, I, you know, we have three downs inside of the seven. Okay. And the first down, you know, every time is going to be a fade ball to you. You got to out muscle out match this guy and, and outplay him. And, you know, we're going to need to see that, but it's nice to see him go up and get the ball here. And this really is a great throw by Justin Fields to high point that yeah, ball. Do you have any red zone clips? I mean, there's, you know, I don't, if you keep talking, I can, I, I know one, um, but it's a negative play. It's against the 49ers. But I think it again shows Matt Nagy. I think people know the clip I'm talking about. It's a red zone. Matt Nagy loved to just have everyone run back shoulder fades in the end zone. Mm-hmm. That was his red zone go-to. And it was yeah. one of the most disgusting thing that I've seen. Um, maybe I'll try and find a link to it or something like that. But uh, I got one more clip. And I don't think we've been going for too long. I can actually probably find another one. Um, that I think would better suit how to finish it. Uh, but I'll show this one just because it, it, it's kind of the same thing that we saw the last two clips, right? It's just Cole Komet going over the middle, right? Finding this space, Justin Fields giving him a ball. And again, like, right, like not mm. a perfect ball. Probably want to put this one a little lower, right? Yeah, this is, definitely. Now, if, you know, if if Eric Kendricks was here, right, that's, <laughs> that's where you put the ball at, you know? But that's, obviously, that's not <laughs> the throw that we want there. And Cole Komet does a great job of taking the hit placing the ball down, getting the first down. That's kind of what you want to see from your tight end. Again, this guy is not a unicorn. And Kyle Pitts, I I really think, like, within the next year or two, Kyle Pitts is going to be the best the best tight end in football. And I think yeah. t- Travis Kelsey, you know, I know Gronk just retired, and we're all talking about how Gronk is the greatest tight end of all time. I think Travis Kelsey, if he keeps up his production with mm-hmm. another year or two, I think he he instantly becomes that. And I think George Kittle, a healthy George Kittle, is the most talented tight end in the game. But I think Kyle Pitts is just a, a freak, a guy we've never, ever seen before. And, and I don't even know if he's legally allowed to drink yet. I think he still might be 20 years old, um, So, which is crazy to think about, right? But crazy. I, I think Cole, Cole Komet is just going to have to find his niche. He's a balanced tight end, so use him in balanced ways. We're not going to see him be the lone guy out here. I think we're just going to have to accept him for what he is and be okay with that. And I think that's kind of what I'm coming to is, well, sure. Okay. I don't like where he was drafted. Fine. Whatever. Get over that. That was 2020. We're in the summer of 2022. Now we got a new quarterback. We got a new system, new GM, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, new everything, right? That's fine. Let's find a way to use this guy the best of his abilities. And I think this is exactly where it happens over the middle of the field. I don't have to show it too many more times because it's kind of very much like the Packers clip that I've showed and just like the Vikings clip. I'm going to go ahead and find um, this clip that I was talking about from this, from that same game, the Steelers game. It's another way he was used. Um, and it's on this rollout pad. It's, it's just like, it's the rollout, just like um, the 49ers game. Okay. So, we're here. Uh, Jimmy Graham's the one with the arm sleeve. This is 12 personnel, uh, which I don't think they're going to do a lot of this year. They, they might want to because uh, I know the Packers try to do a lot of it, and a lot of teams just like to go multiple tight ends. But they, like I said, Ryan Griffin, James O'Shaughnessy, I don't know how much they want to use those guys. But this, this is a better job of Justin Fields getting his head around and finding the open guy. And that's a great job flipping his hips and putting that ball right on his numbers. But Cole Komet moves a lot better in space than I would think he did. And he does a great job of finding a great place to aim this corner at. Cause he knows that this is, this is most likely just cover two over here, right? Cause they're going to bracket. They've got this over here. They're manned up. So they're manned up. So Cole Komet knows that I've got one middle field safety and I've got one guy who was either supposed to be manned on me and he fell for the, for the play fake, or he's just covering anywhere from, um, hook the fl- curl the flat right so he knows that I have to pick this spot 
I'm trying to gain as much ground. See how he's going pretty vertical. Yeah. This isn't like, this isn't like, you know, a corner that's really like bent toward the sideline. This is a, this is, you know, he's really trying to gain ground. And I think he does a great job of understanding where I was at as I put the wrong thing on my screen. But um, I think, again, great job of him being aware of the situation. Great job of him finding space. And this is, I believe, the week after the 49ers game. So we saw Justin Fields. I showed him missing Cole commit this week. He gets him, right? And, again, that's a great throw. It's a great job of flipping his hips, getting his eyes around, finding the open man. This is a lot of what we're going to see. And maybe if the Bears you know, want to max protect this next time or they just end up protecting it better, right? Say that – I think this is Alex Highsmith. Or I don't know who this is, but say that they account for this guy and try and get a shot play. Well, now you've got Darnell Mooney, Byron Pringle, and Bayless Jones to throw two over the top. Even a guy like Demir Bird and Marquise Goodwin who are, you know, guys that were – deemed as separators and these super fast guys. We really didn't see a lot of that. I know we saw the Marquis Goodwin touchdown um, mm-hmm. against uh, Baltimore, and he had a big catch in this game too on a deep ball, but he almost dropped it. So I think we're going to see a little bit more creativity, and this is a great job. Again, this focus should be on Cole Komet because it is. This is a great job of him and Justin Fields completing a throw, a big-time throw too. Like, again, the best thing I can say about this play is him finding space and knowing where to angle – Correct. Knowing where to knowing where to angle his aiming point, I should say, because this is a tight throw, right? And he doesn't make it too hard on Justin, but it's not easy. This isn't an easy throw, especially wrong and left, trying to get your hips around. Yeah. So this isn't really a throw that Justin can throw on the run, just because he he can he has the time to get that accuracy, flip those hips around, and deliver that ball. So that actually might be my favorite receiving clip that I saw of him. Um, watching the tape why i didn't highlight it the first time that's a great question um but i love it i love what i saw here and again i think he's moving in space a little better than i thought he would he's 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 not mm-hmm. the most fluid mover he's not he's, he's, but not. he's not clunky either you know he's, he's not like a a super robotic kind of guy uh and again he's not kyle pitts he's not travis kelsey he's not tj hawkinson you know in open space but I think this will definitely get the job done. And this is what you're going to see. This is the kind of stuff that we probably wanted to see more of. This is, you know, you look at this and you're like, well, thank God Matt Nagy's not our coach anymore because I should have saw this, you know, a couple more times this game and a few more times in the season, you know, and that's probably why Justin Fields is getting hurt so much because we're having these shotgun, you know, empty spread or like three-man routes with seven-man protection and we're locking on the one guy just a lot of it was really bad I just hated watching it this is the kind of stuff thank God we're going to probably see more of hopefully see more of the next few years with Luke Getze it's kind of it's half the battle is Cole Komet um you know doing his thing and half of it is just Justin Fields like you know putting him in a position where he can make you know the throw he wants to make and that is you know mm-hmm. this is a PA rollout and this is exa- this is where Justin Fields is at his best Justin Fields can be i think a top 5 quarterback um in the league when it comes to you know what he can do on play action i think his stats actually back that up i can't remember exactly what they are but yeah, his accuracy sure. and his yardage um on the play action on the rollout um when he's free is, is really good. And the way, when you talked about the way he moves, he, you know, when, when I look at these clips, he moves a lot like Gronk when I, when I watch some of these, you know, not incredibly mm-hmm. fluid, but he almost looks a little bit quicker than Gronk. You know, the way yeah. Gronk runs is just, is, is awkward. But when, yeah. when you, when you mentioned how he moves, I see a little bit of Gronk in the way he moves. Um, and I'm not, you know, Gronk is special for a variety of different reasons. I'm not comparing him to Gronk, but I just saw, you know, I just, the way he, the way his legs moved, it looked a little bit, um, like Gronk, but yeah, man, I mean, these, these are plays, you know, this is, this is a great job keeping the feet in and, you know, this is what you want to see more of Justin Fields on the rollout and get Cole Komet in these types of situations. So he can do more than just, you know, middle of the field core routes. And is he, he was coming out of the slot here again. Yeah. And this is so, so this is interesting too. You know, you were talking about uh, that in the Minnesota play. You say he's not going to be on the outside a lot. And last year he actually ranked fifth among all tight ends in slot snaps. He had 253 snaps in the slot, which was a 28.2% rate um, fifth among all tight ends. So yeah, you're right. When you talk Good. about, he's going to be coming out of there most that's, that is, you know, you know, again, don't expect him to, to change 
too much when he comes into a new system. Obviously, there's going to be things that are going to be improved, but this isn't going to be a totally different player. Um, so those things are worth mentioning as well. As Don goes, the sound guy, um, sound guy, got a look at that one from Cole Komet or the Steelers defender. Uh, you can see, yeah. him. Well, let's see the end of the play here. Here, Cole, here goes Cole Komet. He's a... Uh, He's going to break yeah. one tackle here, and it's the it's the sound guy. No, actually, I think it was the Steelers guy. Yeah, so, just knocked him right over. Um, That's unfortunate. It's a casualty <laughs> for the sound guy. But, yeah. Um, Man down. Do, you have, do we have one more? No, this is it. This is all I got. So, look, I mean, these, again, like, the thing is about Kokomet that I think we'll both say is he, he's not a 1,000-yard tight end. He's not. He, he's not. He's not going to be that guy. He's not going to ever live up to maybe – what his draft position says he should be, right? And that's okay because, look, this guy had zero touchdowns last year. He had, you know, 613 yards or something. I find exactly he had uh, 612. I was off by one, all right? But if you can get, let's say, 850, four touchdowns, your offense improves dramatically. I mean, when people talk about the Bears personnel, right, and there's this narrative that it's bad and that they're not helping Justin Fields at all, how often do you hear Cole Komet's name mentioned in that group? You don't. You hear the wide receivers only, but you can't forget that that's a very, very important piece of your offense. So if Cole Komet stakes, takes a step up this year, your offense takes up a, a major step. So it's really, really important that he is – you know, elevated this year and that they're really focusing on getting him into a position where he can be that 854 touchdown guy. And if he is that guy, that is you're you're getting close to what you asked for, I think, with pick 43. Right. I mean, you, you, it's especially knowing what we know about him now. You got to be happy with that. And I think that's achievable. Do you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, I think I think with with more comfortability and just being able to have more of those, you know, rollouts, let's say let's say the bears, you know, run five or six more of those, those boot action plays. I mean, most often those are, you know, you're probably going to not going to throw to the same guy every play. So let's say Cole Komet gets one of those targets. That's, that's 17 more catches, you know, in a season, yeah. you know, let's say he gets 20 more catches. So that is another, you know, what, let, let's say he gets 10 yards a catch. That's another 200 yards, you know, receiving. And so that does get your, 850 yards, you know, in your four touchdowns, that's what gets you there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there you have it, man. We, uh, we didn't expect to do this one, but we did it and we hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't checked out our other breakdowns, um, yeah, we got Vegas Jones Jr. We got Jaquan Brisker. We got Kyler Gordon. We got Byron Pringle. Um, we're going to start doing more players who are currently on the team, not just rookies. Um, so if you guys have a specific player you guys want us to break down, please leave that in the comments and we'll be sure to get to it. Um, but yeah, man, for myself, Kevin Lapka, for Kellen Garrison, this has been Bears Nation Breakdowns and we'll see y'all next time. Take care.